Hi and welcome to the Engineered Mind podcast, a podcast about engineering, AI, neuroscience and other interesting topics of life to educate and inspire people all around the world. I'm your host Yusuf and for this episode of the podcast I welcome Alexei Grigorev. He's a software engineer with a focus on machine learning. He works at OLX Group as a lead data scientist. Alexei is a Kaggle master and he wrote a couple of books. One of them is Mastering Java for Data Science and now he's working on another one, Machine Learning Book Camp. And now, ladies and gentlemen, have fun with the conversation. Happy learning with Alexei Grigorev. Mm -hmm. So, Alexei, thanks a lot for being on my podcast. It's a pleasure to have you here. Hello. And uh, what I will start with is, of course, as always, maybe you can give an introduction to yourself, what you do, where you work, and we'll move on from there. Mm -hmm. Hi. Yeah, my name is Alexei. I live in Berlin. Um, uh, I've been in uh, Berlin for five years, and... Um, Uh, before, I'm, I'm originally from Russia, so I lived there in the far east of Russia. Um, finished my school there, uh, finished graduated from university. And then after graduating, I uh, moved to the end part of Russia, worked there for a while. Uh, first, I worked as a Java developer, um, then moved to Europe. First, I worked in Poland for, for a year. Um, Uh, also as a Java developer, and around that time I uh, became interested in machine learning and data science. Um, so I did masters um, in business intelligence, um, and uh, eventually I ended up in Germany, uh, in Berlin. Um, Berlin is a big tech hub, and uh, data scientists are uh, in demand in Berlin. So this is how I ended there, mm -hmm. um, here in Berlin, and. Uh, Since then, uh, I stayed. I already worked in uh, at three companies. Now I worked at OLX Group as a lead data scientist. Um, yeah. That's interesting. Can you maybe walk us or explain why have you chosen the path of becoming a data scientist? Yes, of course. Um, so um, when studying, I was really into mathematics, into statistics, uh, time series, all these uh, mathematical things. Um, But back then, when I was uh, studying and when I graduated, this type of uh, this kind of skills wasn't uh, really required. So people just needed um, developers. They needed somebody who can uh, get some data from data, play it on a website, and uh, that was it. Um, until uh, 2012, when uh, Coursera became popular, and when first course on Coursera was uh, one of the first ones was machine learning, mm -hmm. and. Uh, This is the course I took, and then while doing this, um, the company where I worked, uh, they also encouraged everybody to take this course, and then said, "Yeah, you, if you if you're successful here, then maybe you will find uh, how to use the skills you acquire there." Unfortunately, they the, it wasn't really possible to find uh, a way to use machine learning uh, at that company, um, and in general back then in Poland in Europe. Um, Data science, it already started uh, become, uh, becoming, I think. So there was already positions uh, about data science, but company didn't really know what they wanted. So they usually required somebody with PhD, with strong mathematical background, which uh, didn't really describe me. So I was uh, somebody with background in uh, databases and uh, Java, Java developer. Um, so that's why I decided to to do masters uh, and uh, go deeper into uh, mathematics, uh, machine learning, uh, and also analytics. So the masters was about business intelligence, so more more about analytics. And then uh, there were also some courses about data mining, uh, machine learning, and things like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I after graduating, I understood that this is indeed the thing I want to do, machine learning, not business intelligence, um, and uh, started working work full-time as a, a data scientist in Berlin. Mm. Um, so, and uh, since the, the first job, all the things I was doing were pretty excited, so I don't regret uh, making this choice and uh, making the career switch from a Java developer to a data scientist. Yeah. Um, so you wrote uh, not only one book, but two books, now that you mentioned uh, being a Java developer. One is the Java book, of course, and the second one, as far as I know, is Machine Learning Bootcamp. How how did you get the idea to write these books? Uh, so uh, I really liked writing. Uh, so when 
when I studied, I liked to write. Um, then also working first as a Java developer, I wanted when learning something new, I wanted to publish it somewhere, mostly for myself, not for others. But then also Google would pick this up and uh, people would uh, visit the page. And uh, that was really exciting. So I really liked this feeling, checking my Google, uh, Google, Google Analytics and seeing, hey, like 100 people visited this month and uh, read the content they wrote. That was pretty exciting. Now, eventually abandoned that work, um, but the, the idea of writing something was uh, really exciting for me. Then I was reviewing books for uh, a publisher, for packet publishing. I reviewed like 10 books for them. I was a technical reviewer. And then they were so good at uh, reviewing books. Maybe you, you can write something for us. And then I thought, okay, yeah, I should do this. And because I was a, a Java developer, Still, Java is probably my um, um, like the, the first language uh, of choice. So I, this is something I know pretty well, and also I know machine learning. So I decided, okay, uh, perhaps writing a book about Java and machine learning uh, is a good idea. Mm. In retrospect, it wasn't <laughs> because uh, who who's doing Java, who's doing machine learning in Java? But it was a very nice experience of. Um, Finishing something and and uh, working through uh, working with publisher, trying to shape uh, ideas into something uh, uh, tangible like a book, and then this uh, feeling at the end when holding a printed book is uh, pretty nice. Um, so I I really li I like doing this, and that's why um, I'm doing this uh, once again. Uh, this one I'm writing about Python not Java, mm -hmm. um, no, because Python is the, the language of machine learning. So if you want to do machine learning, you use Python. And then I wanted to take a slightly different approach and then um, a different approach to learning. So when instead of uh, learning first theory and then practice, start with practice and then learn by doing projects. And this is the approach I decided to take um, in the new book. Uh, and so far, I wrote like four chapters. Uh, three of them are already available. Mm -hmm. They're still work in progress, and it's not moving very fast, but I'm hopeful that uh, by the end of this year, it will be finished. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. So you are obviously an expert in, in data science, I would say. If you want to give the audience out there who are just getting started, like also myself, in data science and want to get better at it, for instance, you're a Kaggle master, so mm -hmm. uh, maybe you can give us some tips on how to become better. What would you say? Yeah, so I often see that uh, beginners uh, and also myself included, when I just started, they make a mistake of doing online courses, um, finishing one, then another, then another, then another. And instead of doing things, something practical like a project, they just keep uh, uh, studying new courses, online courses. I also did this myself. And then at some point I realized that, okay, I now, I now know all this theory, but I really struggle with applying all this. And it was really like moving out of my comfort zone to actually start applying this. So I really urge people to, to do this as soon as possible. And even maybe before taking any online courses, mm -hmm. just, uh, just Find a tutorial online, try to work, walk through this tutorial. Or maybe if you have some idea, just uh, find some data set and then try to figure out uh, how to use all these libraries available uh, everywhere. And then once you did this, once you tried that, maybe then it's a good idea to actually uh, go deeper in theory. Um, because then you, uh, it's easier, like once you did some something practical, then uh, yeah. you study theory and then you understand, okay, this is the thing I used and then it becomes easier to, to remember these things because you already experienced this mm -hmm. yourself. You know what these teachers are talking about and then it's easier to just clicks in your head. Yeah, um, This was my experience. And then especially, I think uh, one thing that um, the newcomers should do is... Um, go to websites like Kaggle as early as possible uh, and and start competing there, even if at the end you don't uh, 
uh, with a medal, still you learn a lot during these competitions. Mm -hmm. uh, I think this is one of the um, the best advices I advice a piece of advice I got is to to start putting things in practice early. And I myself was resistant, so I didn't want to go to Kaggle because I had this feeling, oh, I don't know so many things, I'm afraid, I will not do anything there. This is something you shouldn't think about and just go there. And then after you realize that you lack some skills after competing, you go there and learn theory. I think this is a, a better way uh, of studying things. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So obviously you did this a lot of times in Kaggle. What would you say, um, how to become a Kaggle master? Do you ha have to do it all over again? Like all these iteration steps, do a competition, find out your what you're weak in and then optimize from there on. Would you recommend anything else? Oh, well, just practice. practice. Well, practice makes perfect. So exactly. For me, it took uh, half a year to, to become a master. Mm -hmm. And for that, I took part in uh, more than 10 competitions. Uh, so I think it was even more than half a year. Uh, at first, I didn't put a lot of effort there. And then, of course, I didn't do well in these competitions. Uh, but I remember the first competition where I put effort uh, was to find... Uh, uh, so you have a, a question and then you have multiple uh, choices, like just a textual question like uh, when uh, did Napoleon uh, conquer Russia something like this and then there are some uh, answers like dates and then the, the goal of that competition was to give him uh, an answer to choose the right uh, given a question choose the right answer um, that was very exciting so I spent like um, two months uh, trying to do something my position was pretty bad at the end so mm. I didn't do much but the amount of things I learned was immense. And then eventually, like, then I did another competition, another competition, and then it accumulated. And then eventually in one uh, competition, uh, uh, I started from the very beginning when it was announced and then did this for three months straight mm -hmm. um, while trying to maintain a um, uh, high position at the top. Uh, it was very difficult, very time consuming, but then this is how I did it. So, unfortunately, I don't have an easy recipe for becoming a Kaggle master. It requires a lot of effort, and I'm not sure I want to do this again. But doing this once is uh, is totally worth it. Mm -hmm. So, the amount of things I learned, the amount of skills I got um, is uh, crazy. So, yeah, I totally yeah, I recommend see. doing this once, but then doing it second time... So, and also, like there is one side effect of Kaggle, you get, uh, you can get uh, addicted to Kaggle, and then uh, <laughs> so uh, do this with uh, handle it with care. So um, I know many people become addicted, and of course it's a good thing, right? So because uh, it's not like you're doing video games and waste your uh, time, like some people say. Um, but uh, actually, this, uh, you're learning something with mm -hmm. every competition. Uh, it's something useful. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Can you just, um, for frame of reference, tell us what is a Kaggle master? When do you become a Kaggle master? Ah, yeah, sure. So on Kaggle, there are like um, different stages of uh, how to say, uh, like uh, when you compete at Kaggle, you get different so-called badges that mm -hmm. qualify how good you are. So you start with uh, um, first nothing. And then after participating in one competition, I think you become a Kaggle novice. Mm -hmm. um, then uh, if you get a couple of medals, uh, you become a Kaggle expert. And to get a medal, you need to, uh, like there are three medals, uh, bronze, silver, and gold. Um, to get a silver medal, I don't remember, maybe you need to finish in top 20% uh, of bronze medal, then silver, maybe top 10% or top 5%. And for the gold medal, this is the most difficult thing, um, you need to finish in top 10 position, not top 10%, but top mm -hmm. 10 position. This requires a lot of uh, effort because for a competition, there could be um, a few thousand people. And of course, uh, being able to stay on 
in the top 10 is a great achievement. So to become a Kaggle master, you need to have one gold medal, and I think uh, one silver or one gold, so two golds or one silver, one gold. Uh, maybe they might have changed it because I didn't compete for a while. So maybe now the requirements is actually three models. But then there is a second, uh, a next step, uh, which is um, Kaggle Grandmaster. You have to have five gold medals. Mm. And from these five gold medals, so one of the, the medals has to be a solo gold when you compete alone without a team and uh, manage to secure a gold medal. So this is like highest possible level. This is very difficult. So I, um, I stopped only on uh, masters, so I don't have a grandmaster bitch. Uh, so that's the, the gist. It's interesting, interesting. Okay, so you obviously you told us that you're a data scientist. Uh, mm -hmm. Apart from doing all these practices, how what other resources would you recommend to become a better scientist? I would say that probably socializing or going to conferences is quite useful, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, I think so. So networking like uh, can be online networking and also offline, of course, like conferences, meeting people, asking questions, uh, getting contacts, especially if you're looking for a job. Networking is very important. Uh, but also it doesn't always have to be um, offline, like meetups and conferences. You can also do this online and use things like LinkedIn or mm -hmm. Twitter, uh, where you can uh, meet amazing people and also uh spread the word about the things you're doing so especially on twitter and linkedin this is uh pretty easy uh, there is uh, both sides uh, both social networks have a nice community um where if you write something just go there and share it so going uh quickly go back to your book can you maybe tell us what is the book about actually and uh -huh. how did you structure the book Yeah, right. So the book is, uh, you mean machine learning book come, right? The one I'm working with. Right yeah. yeah, so um, the idea behind this book is learn by doing projects. Uh, as I said, uh, when I was uh, learning things myself, uh, I had this problem that I first do courses and then do courses again and then do courses again and mm. then I struggle putting things in practice. So here I use a different approach is practice first. So first, here is a project. Like, let's predict the prices of uh, cars. And then this is the theory you need to this. This is the library you need for this. So you go from problem to solution um, instead of doing it the other way. Uh, because in courses, it's typically here is a solution, and here are some problems that you can solve with this solution. Um, so I try to structure it uh, the other way. So the idea is um, there are multiple projects, uh, like six, seven, throughout the book. And then in each chapter, we take a project and uh, develop it from end to end, like from the problem formulation to uh, the model. And then in some chapters, we also talk about model deployment. So instead of just finishing at training the model, we take it one step further and create a microservice, a web service, Uh, for deploying the model. So this is quite important for um, uh, data scientists and machine learning engineers uh, who um, like for work to actually to be able to uh, to use the models, not just train them and leave them in Jupyter notebooks, but let, let actually others use it. So yeah, that's the idea. So the main idea is learn by doing project. And second is also um, give some sense of for what real production can be how we can go through there and deploy the models. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Yeah, I'll put the link to the book anyway down in the description yeah, so every, everyone can get your book with a discount code. It's I have it already. It's quite it's a quite good book, I have to say. So one last thing I want to touch on is uh, you also did something very cool, which I saw, I think, on Twitter, is that you have a GitHub repo with some data science questions mm -hmm. where people can participate. Maybe you can give us a little bit of insight there. Yeah, so the idea of um, preparing a list of questions is not something new. I did this uh, five years ago for the first time when I was uh, myself looking for a job mm -hmm. uh, in data science. So I found uh, like all the questions I could about data science and then put them into a blog post. And then that blog post received a lot of attention, so a lot of visitors. Um, then I didn't do 
anything with this uh, blog post for a while. Until recently, uh, I decided to, to start using Twitter. And then one of the things uh, I wanted to come back to was these interview questions and then trying to, to build on that material I had. And then instead of building on this, I, I thought that the questions I had are a bit outdated, so I probably should uh, uh, do something new. So I decided to, to, to come up with new questions that uh, based on my more recent experience also interviewing people, not just being uh, uh, a candidate. Um, so I put all this together and then um, first shared it on Twitter and uh, published a blog post. Mm -hmm. And then somebody said, but hey, what about the answers? So I didn't put any answers, of course, because I, I already had like 160 questions there. It was too difficult for me to, uh, to manage that. And also the idea was that people who use this list of questions, they would find the answers themselves. Um, but eventually uh, somebody suggested, but how about you create a GitHub repo and then we'll just post uh, answers there. And this is what I did. Uh, first it was just a GitHub repo, but then um, in GitHub, there is a thing called GitHub pages, which makes it extremely simple to create, to convert the um, GitHub repository into a web page, which I did recently. And then now everyone can access it. It's right now, it's just a simple website that people can just go visit and uh, uh, read things. So, of course, um, it's mostly questions and the answers are given by the community. So it's mm -hmm. not uh, me who, who writes answers. Um, I only came up with questions, but already like 30 people contributed uh, the answers. And then you can just go there and check what these people wrote. And then also maybe if there is a mistake, you can correct it. Or if there are some questions without answers, there are still like 60 of them without answers. You can also go there, uh, uh, find the answer and contribute. And everybody will uh, be able to use these answers in preparation. But of course, um, you should handle it with, with care because these uh, uh, answers are prepared by the community. And often these are people who are only um, starting their journey on becoming data scientists. So these answers might not always be 100% correct. Some people also commented that they are shallow answers. They don't show that the uh, the answers don't show that people really know things. Um, so, of course, I don't think it's that serious, but uh, uh, I wouldn't use it as a single source of truth when preparing for data science interview. And, of course, if you see a way to improve the answers, please do. Everybody will uh, benefit from that. Mm, that's great. That's great. So, uh, one last question for you is if you... If the phone rings, that's always a question I like to ask. If the phone rings now and 18-year-old Alex is on the phone, <laughs> what would you tell him? Except, except of course, to say, don't do too many courses. What would you tell him? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I probably, that's a difficult one. Uh, so one thing I'm not sure about completely is whether the masters I did was really worth it. Yeah, yeah I so see. I spent two years doing master, getting a master's degree. It was fun. I met a lot of amazing people and I learned many things. But if I think in terms of return on investment, mm -hmm. like on the, so I invested two years about, uh, in, in this uh, in master's. So would I be better off doing something else during this time, perhaps working? I don't know. So maybe I would tell uh, young, my younger self is, uh, uh, Instead of doing masters, just start uh, working. So bachelor, I think, and gives enough background to actually be able to work. And now with uh, the demand, uh, that, uh, uh, since data science uh, skills are still in demand, um, masters might not always be really necessary. Mm -hmm. So I would just suggest uh, instead of getting into masters, try to work uh, for these two years. And then I think career-wise, it's uh, a better time investment. Mm -hmm. That's a very so good course, advice. Yes. <laughs> so uh, it's kind of, mm, this piece of advice might be, mm, not all people will really take this seriously because mm. uh, a master's is a good thing. But um, 
I think in terms of uh, career, um, spending two years, uh, like let's say um, you start your career now and you have two choices. Do masters and then start working as a junior or start working as a junior now and then in two years you probably become a middle data scientist. Mm. right? And then uh, in two years, it's already like career progression for the person without masters is already two years ahead. And then maybe in five years, this first person is already a team lead while second one is only trying to get a, to become a senior. I don't know. Um, so I would uh, suggest my uh, younger self to, to, to think carefully before uh, getting into masters. Mm -hmm. I'm completely on your side here. Because I'm, I'm thinking the same way, because basically in, in nowadays you can like self-educate mm -hmm. like yes, in, exactly. in the internet. It's it's su super easy. You have online degrees, even from Stanford, for instance, in artificial intelligence and so on. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, which is also a degree, but you, you, you have the possibility to have a lot of different resources. So, mm -hmm. so with that being said, uh, as I mentioned, I will put every link down in the description from Alexei. You can follow him on Twitter, of course, connect on him uh, with him on LinkedIn. And also, uh, if you are a data scientist, even a young one, you can contribute to his GitHub repo uh, about the data science questions. Yes, are there you. any closing remarks from you, Alexei? Anything you want to tell the audience? Some inspiring words, anything like that? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Be interested in what you're doing. Yeah. Yes, that's the one of the most most important things. And then with interest, um, everything is possible. Great. That's a good. That's a good closing <laughs> remark. Alexei, thanks a lot for your time, and uh, yes, see you Thank on you. social media. Thank you. Yes. Thank you for having me. Sure. Goodbye. Bye.